Well, the International Youth Day 2017 is also dedicated to celebrating young people's contributions to conflict prevention and transformation, as well as inclusion, social justice, and sustainable peace. In what way would you say they have uh, done this to deserve the honor? Well, you know, I can give you one million and one names. And when I say names, I mean Nigerian youth names that have done quite a lot. Uh, uh, let me mention a few. Ambassador Bolori lives in Bruno State. And he has actually instituted a program for de-radicalization and peace building, uh, and actually founded an organization called Exit Lanes, where they're training young people and mobilizing young people to uh, embrace peace in the state. And he has gone beyond that. He actually now works in close collaboration with other international NGO, local partners, and even the government to see how they can inform policies and decisions that will promote peace and they radicalize young people that have gone into insurgents. Just last week in Lagos State, Olumide Ido mobilized young people and, and had a dialogue where he brought uh, key speakers and, and influential people, older people, to have intergenerational dialogue where young people and older people can actually have a conversation around peace building and showcase what young people are doing. You know, I can mention quite a lot of young people doing uh, 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 or playing roles that are building peace and ensuring peace, peaceful coexistence. I have other young people who are using farming to promote peace. Young people in Nigeria have actually done quite a lot. You know, you have Sam Sinitodo, who is working to ensure that our electoral system is strengthened and other public institutions around election are strengthened. You know, I have other young people who are working on police reform, on judiciary reform. So, so for me and for us, young people are actually the ones informing uh, what is happening presently in the country. So will you say young people or the youth are ready to take up leadership positions? Now for 2019, I think we're ready. I think that we think that we are ready. I think that, you know, we want to be ready. But um, my opinion is, I don't think that, because, okay, maybe it's just me. I haven't particularly seen anybody that is ready for 2019 yet, because I, I think it takes a while. It's, it, there's a momentum, it builds up. And I haven't seen anybody who is in that, who's doing that particular line. So maybe not 2019, maybe, you know, further down the line. I, I really believe that it was an, uh, it was an awesome move. Thanks, Samson Toto. And I'm, I'm so glad that we got the hearing. I'm glad you said it's your personal opinion, I said, but uh, we keep hearing this question all over and again. Are young people ready to take leadership role? You would agree with me, I said, and, and my brother Ben, and, and even uh, uh, Victor, in the civil society space, young people are the ones dominating and leading this space. In the entertainment industry, young people are the ones dominating and leading this, this space where we're actually contributing to GDP growth of Nigeria. If you look at private businesses and social enterprise, young people are the ones leading. And then when we come to politics or public governance, and then we keep hearing, are young people ready? I'm not sure, but when do you think young people would be ready? When I was younger in, in my pre-nursery, we keep hearing that you're the future leaders, you're the leaders of tomorrow. I am older now, yes, still less than 35, but I still keep hearing I'm the future leader, the leader of tomorrow. For me, I believe that the tomorrow is now. And if we keep saying, are young people ready? Are you... Let me ask you publicly. If I run for public office today, would you vote for me or not? If you were running for any political position, I'm like, you know, I... I most likely will vote you in. But you know, you are not running for and the people I haven't seen anybody yet. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's from my part of the you know, internet. I haven't seen anybody online that's a young person that is, you know, looking to take a position in, in government or a position to lead. So I, I actually that is why I said I don't think that we're ready for 2019. We, we will be ready for 2023, but I don't think that we're ready for 2019. Yes, we're leading in the entertainment industry. Yes, we're leading in all, all you know, all, all, along, you know, different sectors. However, I haven't seen anybody who is, it's, it's, it's more than just passing a bill. It's for people to be ready to take positions of power, you know. So that's, that was why I said, in my opinion, we're not ready for 2019. I mean, if you look at how we, we've been leading in, like, like um, uh, I have said, the entertainment industry, 
if you go to the private sector, you see young people doing a lot of things, um, even in terms of social media, developing applications and all that. Uh, we are doing a lot of things in terms of technology, agriculture. So we are doing a lot of things. I think we are ready. But I think we still have this uh, party affiliation problem that will, that will be some kind of problem uh, we'll be facing as young people. But I think with time, things will be taken care of. For 2019, Anobra State, I think you can see some young people are now coming up to say, look, we want to run. So I think we can start from there. So there's a place, there's always hope for us. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. We can start from the Anobra and see how many young people are coming out uh, for the governorship election that is almost by the corner. And so I think we are almost ready. We are ready because there's nothing to wait for anymore. These old men have been ruling us for over a decade now, and 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 it has always been the same story, running the same cycle. And so, if we don't take up leadership now by force, I think there will be no. Like Charlie Boy has said, if we don't, if we if we do not stand up to speak for a fight for our right, we don't have any future. And so, we just have to fight for the future now. And it's not going to come. Um, it's not going to come so cheap. We just have to fight for it. We just have to push. We have to press until we get what we want and change things. Change cannot just happen. Someone has to spearhead it. Someone has to just be there to, you know, uh, uh, make sure that things works. And so whoever that is there to to help or spearhead uh, or to move any motion that will make things work for us, we all just have to be there to support any young person that has credibilities and can show that that can show purposefully that he's that he's he put it he put the tax to show some kind of uh, good leadership. Uh, well, we have to wait and see how all of that plays out. But then thank you for joining us. But we have to leave the conversation here. Of course, till another time, we'll take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.